We start today's video with a quick recap of what happened on stage 9. It was an action-packed stage, particularly towards the tail end of things. This is what happened on the final climb on stage 9. At the base of the climb, all five GC contenders that I've picked out have locked horns. Bertie looks around at the youngsters and said to himself, See you later, kiddos. I've been winning Grand Tours since 2007. I am off. Froome takes one look at Konzo and says, Do you think that's high cadence? And starts pinning his legs at about 4,000 RPM, bends the elbows outwards and says, Sorry Uncle Condor, you've had your turn, this is my grand tour, and zooms off to win the stage, punching the air, as if to say, take that everybody else. Coming off a rest day, we've got stage 10 of La Volta 2017. Today is Tuesday 29th of August, and the 164 kilometer course goes from Caravaca de la Cruz to El Pozo Alimentación. El Pozo Alimentación, by the way, it translates directly as the food well, as in where water goes, which sounds pretty good to me. The parkour is downhill for the first half of the day. I imagine that's quite easy, maybe not. And it peaks about four-fifths of the way through at this Category 1 climb, which is at 1,200 meters, the Collado Bermejo. And it's a tricky course towards the end, culminating in lots of little twists and turns in the road, where we might see some attacks leading into the finish. As has been the case for a large part of the Vuelta, as well as the Tour of France 2017, your man Christian Keniz here has been leading the peloton for Team Sky. Team Sky, given that they've had the red jersey for a while now, have been in charge of marshalling the peloton to make sure no one gets away too easily and that on the uh, climbs they can set the pace so that everyone is sufficiently exhausted and it means that there's less of a chance of them attacking uh, Froome, their team captain, and getting away too easily. So Christian Keniz, what a hero. Ian Stenow just tucked in there behind him. He's been absolutely you know, destroying himself to keep ahead in the peloton. And you can actually see in these in the pictures of him, he's got these deeper sunken eyes than he had in the tour. He's not as fresh. So while the Sky Boys were keeping the pace for the peloton back uh, on the climb, up ahead, there were a few riders making the breakaway who were allowed to go off because they didn't have that close a time to Chris Froome on the general classification. And that's what often happens in these grand tours, particularly towards the, the tail end of the race, the second half, which we're now going into. There are bigger time gaps between the top guys and the people like Genies here, who's putting his foot out to stop himself from actually toppling over on the corner, which he's taking quite quickly. He apparently comes from a cyclocross cross background. So they're allowed to go up ahead and fight out for the stage win amongst themselves, while the GC boys are further off, back behind them, on the mountain, waiting for each other to make moves so they can actually attack each other as a, and forget about the guys who are less far up on the GC. One of the first guys to make a move in the GC group, that's the general classifications by the way, in case you don't know, is Nibali. Nibali is called the Shark of Messina. Messina is a place in Italy where he comes from. And he's called the Shark, I think, because he attacks like a shark. And somewhere where he's particularly uh, powerful or uh, effective is on the downhills. He's really good at descending. So I wanted to get a little shot of him on the way down in this new style that I'm trying. As you can see, there's no structural pen marks whatsoever. I just go straight in with the paint because I'm exploring stuff and I want new things to happen. And I'm open to the universe and what it delivers me if I make myself uh, do stuff that I'm not used to. So I'm very happy with the second one. It's, again, it's Nibali. He made a few attacks and that's to reflect the way the chicanes. Once you're going left, then you're going right, then you're going left. And that was the very nature of the descent which we found ourselves on today. And I wanted to reflect that in these paintings. A couple of days ago, I woke up and in my inbox, I often get emails from people asking for my paintings and saying thank you and all this sort of stuff, which is absolutely lovely. And I got a message from a man called Matteo Trentin. I'm thinking, wait a minute, I know that name. He's already won a stage in the Volta. And it was him, it was the Italian writer from Quickstep who was inquiring about the paintings and he wanted one of himself. So when he won today, he won the sprint victory uh, quite comfortably, I would say, after climbing so well, I thought to myself, he's going to probably want to see this painting, so I better make it a really good job. So I gave this a little bit extra time than I usually do. Usually I'm under a time constraint because there's only so much I can do in a day, which explains my kind of style, which is a bit out there, isn't it? Uh, and quite loose and full of imperfections. So with this one, I tried to spend a little bit more time, not too much. I, I don't like to go wild with pieces and overwork them. And this is the result. 
So he won the stage on stage 10, having gone ahead on the climb, climbed superbly well for a sprinter, and on the descent he didn't lose his movie star man, he stayed with him, followed his wheel, Rojas, who apparently knows the area very well, so Trentin got lucky there with a little gift with some local knowledge of the twists and turns on the descent. And on the on the on the ride into the victory the stage, the finale, sorry, he he won the sprint very comfortably and had time to celebrate with his arms out like this. So well done, complimenti to Matteo Trentin. If you like any of these paintings and you've been watching the Vuelta and want a really nice way to remember it then these will go on sale. The originals will be on sale at the end of La Vuelta. And if you do want to get in there first, as there are only one of each because there'll be originals, they are originals, then please go to my site, captainsmithdesign.com and sign up to the email Peloton. And that way you will get first dibs on the ones you want. And I'll make sure that the price is, is right, if you know what I mean, so that if you don't get the one you were really looking forward to or really wanted in your bedroom or bathroom, then there are plenty of others out there for you to get your hands on and I'll make it so that you won't feel too hard done by if you don't get the one you want because the price will be affordable, let's say. So I really look forward to having you on board with the Peloton. When you do join, you'll actually get a daily email. As of today, I'll be including a daily video, all the paintings on my website and a little personal message from me. So go to the website, captainsmithdesign.com and join the email peloton. And the 2017 edition of the Vuelta is really heating up. And I cannot believe Nibali's come in and got that stage win. Aru, 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 aru. So, Contador's gone back, Contador's gone back. What's happening? He's completely broken. Contador, Contador, he's going to have a lot of trouble. He's in a lot of pain, he's in a lot of trouble. He's getting on a lot of pain. Whatever happened to Contador? And Alaphilippe has gone flying around that corner. How has he done that? He's broken away from Mike. He's going to get the win. He's got it. He's got his first Grand Tour win. There are so many cars out all the time. I, I love it. All this, all this beautiful air I get to breathe in. Oh, noise and danger. Really makes you feel alive, doesn't it? Day 10 of the 3030 challenge. I am extraordinarily tired and a little bit irritable. As some of you may be able to work out. I apologize. I've already done one lap of Regent's Park. I'm gonna do three in total. Unless I feel like doing more. I haven't eaten enough today. I, I went through that whole watermelon. Had a load of bananas. Had a pack of papayas. And a load of pasta. But I'm still hungry, hungry, hungry. And I cannot believe Nibali's coming. And just focusing on enjoying myself. I've been quite stressed all day. I uh, naturally put on myself with the, the song we did, which I'm so happy with. You know, there's always a temptation to make it absolutely perfect and make the video perfect and put the adverts for the video, make them perfect. But the whole, I don't know, a lot of my success in my eyes in the last two months has been through giving preference to getting something out 
as opposed to making it perfect. And so I carried on with that, even though it's very difficult because with a song, I think, people know when it's not right. They're so used to high quality stuff. And so it was more tempting than it has been with the videos to put up something, sorry, to keep it away because it's not perfect. But still, I, the, the, the draining and time draining aspect of trying to make something perfect really made me stressed today, which is why I've been working since until about 9.30 at night because I was just faffing around trying to make stuff perfect. A little sort of lesson for me is that the only person putting expectation on myself is me. Everyone else is just happy with what they get. And so particularly with the song and the videos, the aim is to get something out there as opposed to make it absolutely stupendous and try and knock the world away. It's a long game. You've got to keep going. You've got to keep on the bike. You've got to keep rolling. Keep momentum. I lost a little momentum today, so we're getting it back with the ride. And tomorrow I'm back on another video. Really looking forward to it. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Cycling with Sam. Hashtag 3030 challenge. I'm in Sainsbury's buying fruit. Chris Groom having an absolute small moment. Over to you, George. Beautiful. What a race this is shaping up to be. We hope there's more to come of this. If only it could last forever. And nectarine is what I want next. <laughs> oh yeah, that looks tasty. I'll definitely get one of those. Let's put it. What? That was 20? Oh my god. Oh, it fits in the bag there. That's something. It might seem crazy spending 20 pounds on fruit and gnocchi. It was hiding underneath the fruit, which I didn't show you. But last month I was basically eating bread and spaghetti hoops because I was so busy I wasn't taking care of my health and my breathing diminished hugely. I had some serious problems. Sorry, one minute, I'll interrupt this. Did you get the pickles? I think you need to get the pickles. Get the pickles. My breathing diminished hugely and it was really upsetting. So I've decided to spend the time and the money making sure I get my breathing all in shape and I can cycle again. And I think you can see even in my face I'm looking a lot more healthy. So I'm going to keep doing this. It's feeling good. I'm going to carry on with the fruit diet.